Hello and welcome to another Classic Restos. You know what? There is nothing better than to raise money for charities and use the cars that we love as a draw card, the enticement to drag people in. How good are these car shows? Have they become a lifestyle or what? Just about every weekend there's a car show on somewhere, which is great. And as I mentioned earlier, they raise money for some fantastic charities. And in this case, it's a big welcome to the 2017 Dandenong All Holden Day. This is the ninth year of this little event, but it's not so little. It's big enough to attract in excess of over 500 cars. It's thanks to the Rotary Club of Endeavour Hills, then put on by John Turnell and a small team. Now this Holden show is a little different to some. Our classic car parameters are extended here, with all types of Holden made welcome, no matter what the age of the vehicle. In most cases these days, modern cars are sneaking onto the show fields, and they are playing their part in contributing to the day. But here, at this event, it's an all-in. So you'll see plastic chrome, plastic fantastic, and even customs. First cab off the rank today, how you doing Werner? Great, Fletch. <laughs> That's the way, mate. Got a beautiful car here. Now, the reason I've come up to you is because, well, it's so plain Jane original. We're looking at 1976, a HX Premier. Uh, what can you tell us about this, Werner? Well, it's as it is. That's how I picked it up on the day, 19, November 1976. You've had it since brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Isn't that good? Uh, we go back to the special department now of uh, the guy who bought a brand new. It's so good in 2017 to right. speak to an original owner. So it'll be 41 years old this year. Right. Unreal, isn't it? Geez, you would have been a young bloke when you bought that, weren't I? <laughs> hey? Hey? Yeah. I didn't, know kid, I didn't know kids at the age of 12 were allowed to have a licence. Oh, thanks, Fletch. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, mate. Now, thanks, we, we look around the body. Uh, you've kept it in incredible uh, condition. Werner the Blue, uh, what's the name of that? Deville Blue. Yeah. It's nice. It's beautiful. Is that the original paint? Absolutely. It's all original. What you see is yeah. all original. See, these are the scores, aren't they? These are the cars that uh, people are after. I mean, if this was sitting in a shed somewhere, hadn't been driven for five years, it'd be uh, it'd be the thing that someone would drive from Perth to come and have a look at. Now, by the time the HX came around, I mean, it was a, you know, a refined HQ in every degree. Yeah, we look at the interior. The seats are beautiful. I mean, it's got the, uh, the element of the United States in there in terms of uh, where their designs came from. We've got a bit of wood grain around the dashboard. Uh, seats are nice, back armrest, beautiful interior. Absolutely. Original too. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no, no, there's no problems with that upholstery, it's just brand new. It's a, as original as you are, Werner. That's, that's because it had covers on it when the kids were in it. Right. Pleasure talking to you, Werner. Same here, Fletch. Good on you. Making our way through the incredible 2017 Dandenong All Hold On Show. How you doing, Wayne? Good, Fletch. How's yourself? Good, mate. Good. Now, uh, 1974, HQ Statesman, a DeVille. What an incredible car. I want to talk about the interior of this car. What can you tell us, first of all? Uh, the interior, it, um, all the seats are all 100% original. Um, we fixed up a little bit of the, the vinyl, but not a lot, only for, due to uh, sun cracking. You know, these were really the, uh, the Australian Cadillac, weren't they? Yeah, it certainly were. They were a beautiful car to drive. Um, great on the road. Wayne, the brocade trim, as you said, the, it's in perfect order. Uh, it's just beautiful, no matter what angle you look at this car, and it just looks so comfortable. I mean, it's the sort of car that you just you just want to sit in. No, you certainly do. I, I drive long distances in it. Um, we go to Bathurst every year in it, so, yeah, we just enjoy driving it. Yeah. I remember seeing these cars as a, as a kid and, and just thinking even then how untouchable these things were. I mean, uh, you know, like, wow, they were an incredible car on the road. They looked good. The vertical tail lights out back, a carryover again from an American design. Uh, they just finished these cars very, very well, and it was a hats off to GMH here in Australia for doing that. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, I, I'm a bit biased, but I love the rear end of it. It um, stands out from the rest of the the cars on the on the street especially all, all the different HQs they're all they're all the same except for the statesman so yeah. yeah so Wayne the family involved with the car yeah the fam family loves it the wife and the t kids love coming out especially Nick Nick's in a wheelchair so he loves coming out with dad in the car so yeah no it's good I've got a shot of Nicholas up on screen now he, he must love this car 
Yeah, he certainly does. When he was still able to walk it, if I start at the car, he'd come running, running out. Now that he's in a wheelchair, he he only can hear the car. And when I go to start, I pick him up and I actually put him in the car so he can hear it and be involved in the car. Good on you, Wano. You're a, you're a good bloke, mate. Thanks, Fletch. I tell you what, when it comes to different, does this fit the category or what? How are we doing, Darren? Very good, thank you, Fletch. That's the way, mate. Now, what have we got here? I, I know I know it's a 1984 WB. Yep. What's the go? It's almost like the uh, WB LS Monaro that never was. It's an 84 Caprice Coupe. It was engineered by um, a Lawrence Sparks from GM. And a guy here in Melbourne actually built it. OK, so how many are we talking? This is it. This is the only one. This is the one. This is the one, yes. Jeez. So you've got certification papers. Yes, I have them right here on the yep. side of the car, yeah. 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 So, mate, phew, geez, <laughs> Fletchy's getting a bit lost for words here. Yeah. How did you find it? Uh, it's a funny story. I just uh, joined a Facebook site and it popped up on Facebook. And at first I thought it was just a joke. It was photoshopped. So I just let it go. I didn't even contact it. Then two days later, it popped back up again, and I messaged the guy and come yeah. and had a look. Yeah. Are you sure it's not someone's backyard uh, project? Definitely not. I met the original builder on Thursday this week. Yep. And he gave me some more paperwork and yeah. photos. Yeah, fantastic. And I think 1984 too. I mean, for the big size car, 1984 was uh, getting pretty late. I can remember uh, the TV commercials that Peter Brock did with the Magnum. Yep. Um, I'm wish this here got onto the TV as well yep but back in that time it was just uh, a prototype type yeah. of thing and yep. just it. it's hard to believe too when you think back 1984 big car like the WB a uh, little five liter there and they were advertising it as a performance car or named yes. as the Magnum they were it was really uh, the final end of the era of uh, this big size Holden wasn't it yes it definitely was and um, I think they went to the smaller V6s or the six cylinders and all yeah. that from here on, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, they were no slouch either. I mean, I remember the, the first V6s that came out in the Commodores, they well, went like rockets. Oh, yeah, mate, and they still go. We actually they got do. a... Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Darren, a car such as this, uh, do you go to many shows? I mean, where do you take it to? I mean, it's the first time I've seen it. Well, this is only the second show I've taken it to. Um, I took it to another show about two weeks ago. I've only had the car for seven months. So yeah, my plan is to try and take it to a few more to get it out there and people to see. Where was it though before you got hold of it? It was uh, actually here in Melbourne. A, a man... What, just in a shed? No, the lady who owned it, she drove it as, as, as you see it. And they used to tow their boat and everything with it. It was actually a car that was used. Well, there you go, Darren. Fletcher's been living under a rock. Yep. <laughs> I think all the rest of us as well, because I never yeah. saw it before until Facebook. Yeah, good on you, mate. It's all about being a little bit different and uh, extensions of your own persona and finding a car to meet your needs. And this is just an incredible score. And to think that you've got papers for it as well, that yes. just makes it extra, uh, extra special. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Good on you, Darren. No worries, Fletch. OK, with me now, the organiser of this fantastic day here at Dandenong, John Turnell. How are you doing, buddy? Good, Fletcher. How are you? Good, mate. Jeez, I tell you what, you've had your hands full. You've been busy. We've been absolutely flat out organising this great show. We've got about 500 Holdens here. And have a look at that. We've got chromes, we've got plastics. It's just magnificent. John, credit where credit's due. The largest Holden show on the other side of the bay, the uh, All Holden Day at Geelong, which I'm very familiar with. Great team there with that show. We're a long way away. We're on the other side of the bay here. Certainly, uh, I guess, the biggest Holden show on the eastern side. Oh, yep, it ab absolutely is. We, yeah, as I said before, we've got about 500 cars here and it's going off. Um, one thing about what you guys emphasise, you don't mind the plastic cars. I mean, over there, what's going on over there, John? Looks like a, a dealership uh, lot there with Commodores for sale. Yeah, what we thought we'd do is we'd separate the cars and have all the plastic bars on one side of the um, arena and all the chromes on another. And it's also going to make it a lot easier for the judges to go and judge the cars. So, yeah, I think that's a nice thing. And I'll tell you what, the quality of cars that you've got here today, it's astounding. It really is. Some of the finest customs and original Holdens you'll find here. I'm, I'm actually uh, quite taken back. Yeah, we've got a lot of red-blooded Holden lovers and the proof's in the pudding. Just have a look around. OK, now you stand for good causes, uh, John. Uh, lots of uh, charities prosper from today. Of course, the Endeavour Hills Rotary Club are behind it and you guys organise it, right? That's correct. That's right. Yes, yeah, so all the money we raise, it goes back into the local community. So we're out there helping all the um, the youth, you know, getting them um, courses and stuff in car repairs and anything to do with the auto trade. So all the money we raise goes to a really good cause. OK, so John, you guys, you're not actually a car club as such. No, we're the Rotary Club of Endeavour Hills. So this is one of our money uh, raising charity events that we do. 
See, isn't that good? The Rotary Club, they can see how important it is to get a paddock full of classic cars and some plastic cars over there. The crowds come in. I mean, you must have near a 1,000 people through the grounds here today. Uh, it just works, doesn't it? Yep. Again, we're all red-blooded. Hot. Holden enthusiasts, so it works out really well. OK, now, John, a show like this just can't end in 2017. Of course we're back here for 2018. Contact details, or do we just hit social media? Uh, go to Dr Google and look up the Rotary Club of Endeavour Hills, yeah. and we'll advertise next year's show, and I'll give you a little tip. It's going to be bigger than it was this year. Oh, well, there you go. I tell you what, I've said this before. I think Facebook should be a sponsor of this TV show because I mention them enough. Check them out. They're, these guys are easy to find. Uh, in for a big year for 2018. John, hats off. Congratulations, mate. What uh, what a show. This is uh, it, it's amazing. Well done. It's been a tremendous turnout. I'm really, really happy with what I see today. Good on you, mate. Thanks, John. Thanks, Fletch. Moving on through, time for M. Hello. Hi, Fletch. How are you? Oh, really good thank you that is good now this is a special story um em's car was the victim of the black saturday fires back in 2009 yes. and you've got a story for us please share it yes when i was 21 my first holden i actually purchased was a hg kingswood and i was 21 at the time and he was my little pride and joy but unfortunately he was taken by the fires and nothing of him could be actually restored so 20 years later I've come across my next project and here he is with a little bit of battle scars to show yep. um, but the closest I could get to what I originally had. Em I think it's amazing that you've actually found a 71 HG that's number one and uh, number two what you've done to this car in tribute to the last one. I mean, this is super sad. I mean, you look at the display board, you've got some of his parts there from the old car all fried up. I know, it's the only thing I could recover. Everything was absolutely gone. He was incinerated. Terrible time back then, we, we know that. Uh, what was the feeling at the time? What was, what was the emotional level? Um, at, the, at the very beginning, very numb. Um, and I had a lot of thoughts and feelings for everybody else that lost a hell of a lot more and lives were lost. Uh, he was significant to me. It was a monumental time in my life to have such a car. And it took a little bit of time to actually get over it, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Um, but as time takes its toll, I thought, you know, maybe it was about time. And just by chance, I came across my next boy. And, yeah. It's OK, Em, tell us, what's the significance of what you've done going back to the red oxide there and you've, you've rubbed through on the paint? Well, I did want to restore him back to perfection, but because of, obviously, the fires, everybody's scarred. So I wanted to reflect in my restoration the scarring that people would feel and, obviously, show that. Um, and it is a tribute to Black Sat Day, the people and what it meant to everybody as well as my personal journey. And I guess it's a, a recovery for me and closure to my losses and 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 for the day, it's it's a lot to take on. Yeah. This car, how does it compare with your original car? I mean, it looks straightforward, it's as straight as a die, it looks like it's a beautiful car, it's nice to drive. How was the uh, last one that you had? Oh, uh, it's chalk and cheese. He was beautiful from the very day I bought him. $500 special. Um, Hard on cash, 12 months registration, and I was second owner. Books, registration, everything bought, um, and he was a dream to start from go to woe. I never had to spend a dollar on him. He'd always turn the key, always reliable. I guess it was uh, nice to have a him in your life that you never had an argument with. Oh, no, actually, that's the thing. I think oh, I'll stick with the cars. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, speaking of which, this car here, have got the trusty 186 up front. These things, they, they ran like a Rolex, smooth as silk. One of the best red engines that Holden made was a 186. Yes. Very, very good indeed. The interior, the original uh, almost, well, brocade trim on the seats with the vinyl. Uh, the condition of this car, obviously, uh, M, it hasn't had a hard life. No, and that was one of the amazing things when I came across it. I did fall in love with the interior because that was originally what I had in my Kingswood. And the more I looked, the more I investigated, I'm just like, this is ticking all the boxes. I'm amazed that you found this. I mean, it was meant to come your way. It had to be. I, I didn't buy it straight away. It, it took a couple of months of tossing and turning and, and commitment, and I thought, why not? 
You only live once, you only have the opportunity once, make the most of it. Emma, I have to comment about your attention to detail on the inside here. I mean, the Venetian blinds or the expanding blinds on the windscreen, yeah. you got the packet of ciggies there sitting on top of the dashboard and boy, back a long time ago, all these cars, they all had a packet of ciggies up on the dash most to. times. You had to. It was fashionable. You weren't in unless you had a pack of smokes on the dash. That's right. <laughs> What's going on with the top of the roof? Isn't it gorgeous? I had to do something different and why not get the curtain sheer and in this one it's actually got cups in it like trophies and because I think he's a trophy myself I had to put it on. Em, it's been absolutely beautiful talking to you on this week's episode of Classic Restos. I think you're yeah, certainly uh, episode of the day. You've got so much meaning with this car. And, uh, well, you're not M the gem for nothing. Thank you, Fletch. I really do appreciate that. No, that's great. You keep up the good work. And I'm sure it comes from uh, not only myself, but uh, so many people watching today's show as well. Good Thank on you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Time for a replica car on today's show, an SLR 5000, but it's not just an SLR 5000. To tell us more, hello Errol. G'day Fletch, how are you? Great mate, this car is absolutely stunning. I mean, you have gone to every extreme here. Yeah, I have. I've done a lot of work on it um, and uh, got it all prepared to be given to um, motivation to paint it. And yep. um, yeah, it's gone to a lot of work and a lot of time, but it's been worth it. Yeah. Okay. Now Errol, what was the condition before you got it? It wasn't too bad. Uh, had a little bit of rust in the rear window and a bit on the doors. Yep. Uh, given that, the car was in, in quite good nick. Yep. Uh, the interior is all original as it was, so I yep. haven't touched the interior. Yep. But um, yeah, I was quite uh, lucky to get a, a really good car. So, yeah. Errol, the paint, you, you can stand six metres away and you can look at it and see the depth. I mean, it's just got such thick paint. The luster is amazing. Yeah, look, um, you know, like I said, uh, I uh, took it back to, to metal, um, it was on the rotisserie, uh, we tried to get it as best as we can and then it was, like I said, given the motivation who, uh, as I said, did the best job that I could ever ask for on the, on the, on the paint, um, there's a pearl in it, uh, I wanted to make it look a bit different Fletch, so that's what I did and just present it differently uh, as an SLR. Is it your own paint colour or does it have a name? Um, it has a name. The, the boys at the at Motivation call it E-Dog Orange, <laughs> but it, it, is a, it, is, it is a special mix for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Um, certainly had a lot of coats of paint on it and yeah. a lot of uh, coats of clear. I mean, it's almost like your, your vitamin C in your Chrysler yeah, or your, your Vermilion Fire with Ford, yeah. you know, just a little bit of difference here and there to come up with our own colours and I think that that's, that's very, very nice. Okay, now um, we look at engine bays. Now, uh, okay, there's no limit to imagination of where you can go here. Some guys choose to shave the engine bays, have no wiring whatsoever. Yeah. You've done yours very, very tastefully. That's how I like to see an engine bay. It's uh, not totally wireless, but the wire as you can see, are done very, very nicely. Yeah, thanks, Fletch. Look, um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be too much overboard. I wanted to present a bit of originality to the car, but also uh, I wanted to just present a point of difference as well and left things that I thought would look tasteful. Errol, the engine up front looks fantastic, mate. Specs, what have you done? Okay, well, it's a 308. Um, it's been balanced, uh, blueprinted. It's. Um, it's been honed, you know, uh, the, all the work that needed to be done on the bottom end. doesn't have a, a, a you know, a, it's not a 355 stroker, uh, but it's um, got oversized valves, um, 286 cam, crane cam in it, um, roller rockers, all the gear in it. Yeah, it's uh, just had it um, dynoed at around 400 horsepower. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's enough for the car. It's only 1,200 kilos, yeah. so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just made to be quite mild, but quite pokey at the same time. So. Carby size? It's a 600 holly, uh, but it's been rejetted, um, new power valves and a bit of work done to it. Yep. I want it to be uh, quite, you know, as economical as it can be for yeah. the car, yeah. but I wanted to have a bit of power, so they yep. went with that. Does she start first go without the choke? Magnificent. There you go. That's the telltale with your four barrel if you've got that set up right. One pump of the gas, turn the key. If it sits there and idles without the choke, you've got that perfect air fuel mixture, the ratio, flat 13. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it certainly does that. Yeah. And it's very pokey when I need it to be. And, and uh, yeah, with the 3.5 uh, rear end in it, um, it's also quite quick off the mark too. So, yeah. um, 
but yeah, yeah. all good. good uh, Thanks, Fletch. How cool is this? I mean, you, you know, blokes get to, 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 the, to the age, you know, where they've got <laughs> these they've got yeah. these cars that once upon a time the teenagers used to buy, yeah, you know. True. But yeah. we go back, we go back, we remember these cars. We do, we do. They're certainly um, a classic and yeah. uh, lovely to drive. You know, you're driving a car when you drive a classic, yep. um, and that's what we do it for. Yep. Very cool, mate. You're the uh, you're the Tirana of the episode. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Right. Cheers. Thanks, Errol. Thanks, Fletch. Cheers. Thank you. The Holden Legacy. How strong is it here in Australia? Cars such as this. And the legend will live on whilst we still have car shows such as this. The 2017 All Holden Day here in Dandenong. And I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos. Until next week, no matter where you're watching from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. Thank you.